Hey guys, so today we get to be time travelers. That's right, you heard me right. We're going to journey on back to the 1840s and then come back to present day, all with the purpose of looking at the world of mediumship and if it still holds relevance in today's world. So stay tuned. You're listening to the Spiritual Banks Podcast. You guys, I could not have picked a better day to record this specific episode. And the reason is, is because it is so windy outside. And it is making every sound, every creak and and whistle and whatever possible in my home today. And it's perfect because we're talking about mediumship and we're specifically talking about going back to the 1840s, which was a spooky time for mediumship. Um, And so I don't know, I'm just excited. So I also have to say, you may notice that Chris is not a part of this episode. I don't want you to worry. That smooth, silky, delicious voice. We'll be back with us for future episodes, but for now, it's just you and I and the spirit world. And so let's do this. Let's talk about the relevance of mediumship. Some of you might be going, Nicole, what is mediumship? And I am so glad. I'm so glad you asked. Um, Mediumship is the practice of mediating communication between the dead and the living. Uh, practitioners who practice mediumship, such as myself, were called mediums. And there are a few different types of mediums. Uh, Specifically in the Victorian period, there were trance mediums, physical mediums, and mental mediums. And all of them had, all three of them had different jobs within mediumship. Um, And now today we, you know, we have even more, we have, uh, We have angel mediums and we have spirit guide mediums and, you know, we have channelers and there are a lot of different options for mediumship. The important thing that I, I want you to remember, well, there's two important things. Number one, mediumship exists all over the world and all of the different cultures that exist. They're not always called mediums but they do exist. There is spirit world communication, no matter where you live in the world. And number two, the one that I am specifically talking about and will be addressing today is Western world mediumship. So mediumship in America, in America, (laughs) mediumship in America and mediumship in the UK. Um, And we will be taking like this snapshot of how it started, uh, which is super interesting to me on multiple levels, right? And then we're gonna we're gonna play with it a little bit. So all the sounds that you might hear from creaking and and things like that, just let it add to the ambiance of how cool this episode <laughs> is. All right, okay. So we're going to go back to 1848. We're specifically going to Hydesville, New York, and we're specifically going to the home of the Fox family. And there are two sisters, a part of this family. I think they had five children in all, but Maggie and Kate Fox are important to this story. Now, Maggie is 15 and Kate is 12. And they are believed to have communicated with a spirit by the name of Charles B. Rosna through a series of wrappings on the wall. You might also be asking yourself, as I did, who is Mr. Rosna? Well, he was a peddler who went missing some years before the Fox family moved into the Hydesville home. And the initial communication takes place on March 31st, 1848. And most people think that this was like a one event kind of thing that sparked a massive belief system. But in fact, it wasn't. It's something that took place over a five-year period. 
uh, in which the spirit of Mr. Rosna communicated to the girls that he had been grizzly murdered. Grizzly? Well, yeah, that's a word. We'll use it. Grizzly murdered and buried in the basement of this family's home. Uh, And as you can imagine, this became the news of Hydesville. I don't imagine uh, that in 1848, there was a whole lot going on that was more shocking at the time than than Morse code happening with two, two girls and a ghost on the wall of their home. Um, so <clears throat> they started, so when this happened, right, the girls were in bed and uh, they heard these, these rappings on the wall and Miss Fox came in and she heard them and uh, they pulled in some neighbors eventually, and they heard them. And so this all culminated somehow into a police report, and actually a series of police reports taken on that night, not only from Miss Fox, but also the witnesses that came in. Um, and they testified and verified that they too heard the rappings and that it was actually happening. There was actually this conversation of questioned at, questions asked, uh, by the living, whoever was in that room, uh, to Mr. Rosna and Morris code answers from him. And so these girls go on to hold like a massive tour of spirit, of spirit communication. And it spurs this massive movement called the spiritualist movement. Right. And there's this really interesting write-up that if you want to know more details about uh, the Fox family and the Fox sisters and this tour, uh, I'll be sure to put the link in the description, but it's uh, www.snu.org.uk backslash the-pioneer-journal.com. And um, it's it's just this beautiful uh, entry in this, I think it might be like a, a bi-yearly uh, journal that the Spiritualist, the SNU, puts out every year. Uh, but the article really looks at, um, you know, the actual police reports, because as, if you'll read, you'll, you'll see, but they say that they were altered. Um, you know, over time and things like that, which is interesting because did it happen or did it not happen? And this is a really good article to look at to see if, you know, you might be able to make up your mind about it. However, part of what gets me right is that these girls were so young, 15 and 12, and they were then put on this massive tour and As a medium, I think about, like, how nerve-wracking it is every time we get up in front of spirit. And I I don't know anybody that doesn't feel that quickening that does mediumship where your heart's just coming out of your chest and um, your your palms are sweaty and it's mom's spaghetti, right? (laughs) Oh, gosh. Uh, This is why we need Chris here, you guys. (laughs) Um, However... uh, these girls, I feel like were just exploited and taken advantage of. And, and of course that's not the topic. Uh, but it's an interesting thought process of what it would, uh, the toll this would take on the Fox sisters to, to have to keep up with that. So Let's move forward, right? So the reason these girls and what they experienced were seemingly such a big deal and the reason that it sparked this massive movement uh, is because it actually challenged the notion that there was life after death. Uh, it might be helpful to remember uh, is that up until this point, the church controlled how individuals related to spirituality and what it meant to die. And you either spent an an eternity in heaven or hell. And in those times, that belief pattern made up your entire life and how you lived it. And there were so many people afraid of damnation and of going against the beliefs of the church. And this very much so challenged that, but it also gave 
a lot of hope, I think, to people who had lost people that they loved. Um, and it, you know, it wasn't just the everyday kind of person that believed in the movement. Um, it was very notable, educated individuals that helped push this movement forward. And there are some people that I'm about to talk about that I knew about, but there were some that I didn't. And one that I didn't, uh, is Thomas Edison. I had no idea Thomas Edison was a supporter of the spiritualist community. So much so that he actually made a model of what he called the spirit phone, which, sorry, the spirit phone. I got excited, <laughs> which was a scientific approach to spirit communication, um, which I thought was super duper cool. I don't know if they ever got it to work, but there is this documentary. And for the life of me, I cannot remember uh, what it is called right now, but you can find it on YouTube if I can ever remember it. If I end up remembering it, I'll put it in the description as well. Um, but there's this guy in Spain or Italy. I think it's, it's Italy. And he has a, what he calls a spirit radio. And essentially it's just an old, old radio. One that our, our, you know, grandparents or great grandparents would have used, depending on how old you are when you're listening, when you're listening to this. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, what, what this radio claims to do, what, why people flock from all over the world to sit in front of this radio is that it is said that the voices of our loved ones can come through this radio. And so they sent, I don't know how legit the team is, right, that they sent out, but they sent out a a team to kind of test this radio. And uh, they, they even went so far to like isolate it. But what they found out is that, um, and by isolate it, I mean put it in a room where no radio frequencies could be received through the radio, which I think is super important. However, uh, what they found is that these voices that come through the radio have the exact voice signature of the loved one they claim to be. And they found this through, you know, listening back to old recordings or voicemails and then doing a voice analysis of it. So... Super cool. I would love to see that spirit phone come to life for Mr. Edison, but you know, no pun intended, right? <laughs> the The one that I did know about that I think a lot of people know about is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who authored uh, the Sherlock Holmes series. And um, there's some really cool uh, videos on YouTube of him talking about spiritualism. If you ever want to check it out, uh, just YouTube that baby. And, uh, yeah, the next one that I didn't know about was Mary Todd Lincoln, and she's the wife of Abraham Lincoln. And they became involved in spiritualism after the death of their 11 year old son, Willie and Willie died of typhoid. And I can imagine because I am a mother, I can imagine, uh, the pain that Mary must have felt and um, the desire to see if this thing called mediumship worked. And they actually, um, it is said, it is rumored that both Mary and Abraham attended uh, several seances in the Red Room of the White House. And I know that Mary went on to then, uh, after Abraham was assassinated, to try to uh, reach him on the other side via mediums. I don't know how successful it was. I I would think that it would be hard uh, to prove that information wasn't sourced uh, from what people might have already known about the president. However, there's more, you guys. (laughs) Victoria Woodhull, who I had no idea who she was, and I feel kind of silly, but she was the first woman to run for a U.S. presidency in 1872. She was a a backer of the spiritualist community. And if if we look at someone really cool, like who I think is really cool in modern day society, Dan Aykroyd and his entire family, right? Huge spiritualist supporters. It was actually, I think, Dan's I don't think I know. I read it. So hopefully it's true because as you know, everything you read on the internet is 100% accurate. Um, But what I read was that Dan Aykroyd's 
uh, family grew, like he grew up as a spiritualist and, uh, that, that, uh, there were several, you know, spiritualist gatherings in the Ackroyd family home. Um, and it actually inspired him to co-write Ghostbusters. So that's a cool little nugget you can put in your back pocket. (laughs) Um, right. So just some cool people to know about that it wasn't just, you know, people who were very, very afraid of the church or not necessarily even the church. I shouldn't put it that way, but of the church and the teachings of going to hell and that, you know, having this experience, you know, radicalized how they thought about the afterlife. <clears throat> the place that mediumship held uh, in so many lives for so long uh, was to prove survival of death. Like that is the whole purpose or was the whole purpose of mediumship for a very, very long time, Um, starting with um, the very notable Fox sisters forward. Um, Not only that the soul survived, you guys, but that it remembered and was still connected to those in the living, that that bond of love, that that cord of love hadn't been severed. Um, And it became and is this kind of cathartic, uh, life-changing thing for so many people. Now, that's not to say that mediumship wasn't riddled with fraudulent meeting, mediums feeding on the vulnerable. Uh, that ran rapid, and unfortunately, it still does, right? Uh, with any <laughs> With any niche field, if someone can charge a ridiculous amount of money, um, you know, and, and say that they can do something for their, for their services, you're gonna, you're gonna find individuals that are ready to take advantage of that. Whether or not they can, um, doesn't seem to matter to a fraudulent person. So (laughs) you found yourself listening to the spiritual banks podcast with your host, Nicole Banks. Um, however, that's an episode all by itself, so <laughs> let's move forward. It was uh, a handful of years ago that I started noticing that there was <clears throat> kind of this massive energy shift starting to stir within the mediumship community. Um, people were either, you know, really, really in the ego when they were working, and it was all about them and not about spirit. <clears throat> Um, or they were, uh, you know, it, when I was talking to friends, their mediumship was changing. It was starting to look different. And uh, it brought up this question for me of, is mediumship still relevant? And if so, how? Uh, you know, when I started my practice, mediumship was still a really taboo topic, especially where I live. And I live in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, if that if that helps you kind of have a, uh, you know, a little bird's eye view of things. Um, and death threats were a regular thing and name calling was a regular thing. I cannot tell you how many times I've been called an abomination of God, you know. Um, but that, that was the norm. And um, it was me and maybe like one or two other people still going out there and still doing it and still saying, you know, I hear you. However, I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna keep showing up. Um, and having spent a decade or so <laughs> helping to build uh, the mediumship community and the spiritual community up around me, um, I began to have this internal conversation of most, if not all, of my clientele already know and believe that there is this afterlife um, that we can communicate from and to. And, um, that, that really sat with me, um, you know, that, that this goal that the spirit world set out to accomplish, accomplish some like 170 years ago, um, it was seemingly being met in the Western world. I mean, you can turn on your TV or your computer or your phone and have a medium at literally like at your fingertips, 
in an instant, you know? So like, what now? What is the need? What is the service? Where is the spiritual work now? Um, and so I did what I do best. I, I sat with myself and I analyzed multiple levels of my work. And I began to realize that spirit was beyond a doubt for sure teaching us at least at the very least one lesson and perhaps the main lesson through each session gallery interaction they're teaching us how to live our lives how to truly live our lives how to forgive how to take accountability how to have courage strength resolve ethics morals how to love and how to be present in our lives. And here's the thing. I do not believe that the spirit world and mediumship is this massively mythical creature. I actually believe that natural born psychics and mediums, and I use that term natural born to uh, uh, maybe differentiate between those that have to be taught how to open up versus those who seem to already kind of be naturally inclined. Um, but they're, they're utilizing a part of the brain that has yet to be studied enough. I mean, we've done some studies, but we've just tapped the surface of that. And maybe we don't have all of the technology we need yet, but I just believe wholeheartedly that it's just another part of the brain that we don't know that much about. Um, I also believe <laughs> uh, that this unlocked aspect of the brain uh, of most mediums, that's come through trauma. And I, I mean big T trauma. Um, and that it's that trauma-related disassociation that happens when you experience something very traumatic from the brain that has given us the ability to move into another form of awareness because you cannot be here in, you know, in this finite moment, holding on to, uh, your awareness of yourself and be able to do mediumship so that, you know, that is just a little insight into what I think, if it matters, <laughs> Uh, you know, but for some it's hormones, you know, maybe it's a hormone fluctuation of, of, of puberty or pregnancy that alters the brain and opens up that door to another state of awareness. So, you know, it's not black and white, but I, I certainly don't think it's this, you know, mythical unicorn. I think there are a lot of people that can do this. And I actually don't think that, um, it's that outside of the norm. It's just my two cents. <laughs> Um, so I began to take my thought process further, right? And I'm like, okay, they're teaching us how to live. That's beautiful. And it really, it really, really is. But what now for the medium? Like, why does mediumship exist for the medium? Uh, is there this deeper aspect to being a medium that is missed by the general population of mediums? 100% yes. Yes, absolutely. If, if we look at where mediums put their time, and I need to preface this with that I'm not shaming anyone, I'm just saying a lot of a medium's time is spent in action, so in doing, so uh, sessions, galleries, uh, interviews, podcasts, <laughs> see, I'm not judging, um, TikTok, you know, I don't know how many times I've picked up my phone and scrolled through like Instagram or, or TikTok and, you know, bless this medium's heart. They're just, they're just still reading. And, and I don't think we're supposed to be spending all of our time in service. We're, we're supposed to be of service. Um, you know, whatever that looks like for you as a medium, if you're a medium, you know, are we taking time? to be with the spirit world without agenda? Like, are we taking time to simply be with spirit without requesting something from them, such as communication? 
It's an interesting thought process. And I think, you know, I think it varies slightly for each authentic medium what, you know, what it is that we're kind of missing. Like, what is that message that's being miss- missed by us? You know, of course, it, it varies and it's individualized. But I think there's so much more that the spirit world is trying to teach us Um and you know, maybe that's something but maybe that's something for a future episode. So that's my, you know, my look on the relevance of mediumship today. It is still very relevant. I think the reasons that it is relevant now versus a hundred and seventy some odd years ago, that's changed. You know, that's changed. And I think it's important that mediumship and its training of mediums also changes. You know, that we open up that door a little bit wider. Because if you're classically trained um, as a medium, uh, and if you are, you know what that that means. (laughs) That means Arthur Finley College, you know, and, and sitting on your bum for hours blending with the spirit world but the rules are very strict because we're taught how to work towards the skeptic in the room um you know maybe that shouldn't be how we're taught anymore i don't know i'd like if you're a medium i'd like your feedback feel free to email me i may regret that later but feel free to email me so all right you guys Thank you so much for listening, for hanging out with me for just a little while. Um, I hope that you found it, at the very least, intriguing. If you like this episode, please feel free to subscribe to the Spiritual Banks podcast. We are on social media. Yes, can you believe it? We're both on Instagram and Facebook. Feel free to give us a like or a follow. As always, we appreciate any time you share the Spiritual Banks podcast. And if you'd like, feel free to give us a review. Uh, Until next time, we hope you know, even though he's not here, it's still we. We hope you know that the universe loves you, that spirit loves you, and that we love you. Until next week, stay safe, guys.